Good evening, and welcome once again to the Trinity Gardens Church of Christ Wednesday night virtual Bible study. We appreciate the opportunity to come in and visit with you in your home. We appreciate the commitment you have to this study and the commitment you have to study it in your homes. We're going to pick up this unfolding drama, this unfolding human drama, this human story in the birth of the church. We've seen the church's birth in Acts chapter 1 and 2, and we're going to move into chapter 3. Uh, we're going to offer prayer, and then I'm going to ask right after the prayer for uh, uh, Brother Daniels, if you will, to open us up in chapter 3. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for Christ Jesus, our Savior, who, who came over 2,000 years ago to unfold your purpose. He left, O oh Lord, an example for the apostles to follow. Yes. He commissioned them to go, likewise, and make disciples. And Father, that example has been passed down from ages to ages, sometimes altered, sometimes forgotten, sometimes simply neglected until from time to time you reminded us to go back to the original example. Yes. We thank you for this study and for what it's doing for each of us and hopefully what it's doing for all of those who are participants wherever they might assemble. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you, Ralph. And we are now looking at Acts chapter 3. I don't know about you, you've been studying with us, but this is exciting. I mean, we've been talking about the unfolding, God's plan, and, That's right. and, and it's an unfolding story. And I just like that because, again, our story, your story, is still unfolding. Right. And you know what's interesting, too, that every chapter we go through, you're going to see something new and exciting. Yes. Somebody once said, I think in Lamentations, God said, His mercies are new every day. And last week... Uh, we saw the beginning of the church on the day of Pentecost, but we also saw how the church uh, demonstrated this whole new uh, realm of living. That's right. This whole thing. Right. Yeah, it's, it's new. And we saw that a key component was community, mm -hmm. that right. they loved each other. They loved each other. They had doctrine, they had teaching, they, they, they met not just publicly, but they met privately. That's right. And the church grew. And also, we saw that there were Christians who um, had come down and uh, could have been 150 to 200 new Christians in the city of Jerusalem. And they stayed to get the teaching because they were in the body of Christ. And how the, the, the residents, the Jews who lived in Jerusalem, sold their personal possessions to take care of them. So they demonstrated the love that Jesus said you got to demonstrate in St. John 13, and that's how you know. So in chapter 3, we see now it expanding, and we see Peter and John now going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now, before the church got started being Jews, they would go up to the temple to pray. We were in Jerusalem at 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and right. 3 o'clock. That's right. And guess what? They're Christians, but they're still doing it. That's right. That's they're still right. doing it. And by the way, when you become a Christian, that doesn't negate all the even good things that you're doing. Even if it's from another uh, uh, tradition, another denomination tradition, the good things. And they came up in the afternoon and they were praying. And then you see this man here uh, that had been crippled from birth. Hmm. And he was carried to the temple. And, and it is amazing that it was before this gate called Beautiful. I understand there were about nine gates, but this was the most beautiful one made out of Corinthian brass. And when the sun would rise, when the sun would rise in the east, it would shine. And so here's this man. His life is considered by many to be ugly, but he's in front of a beautiful gate. Yes, and he's crippled. And there are many people who come and among us, people we, we know, they are crippled, not physically, but I believe this man had a crippled spirit. Mm. A crippled spirit. And now we're going to see what's going to happen. All right. What's going to happen. You know, as we, as we look at this story, we're going to see how when he saw uh, Peter and John, the Bible says that uh, who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for some money. And that's what he did every day. That's what they brought him there for. That's and right. For money. 
and, and, and when he when, when he asked Peter and, and John, uh, Peter looked at him, and, and John looked at him, and he said, you know, I, I don't have what you want, silver and gold I don't have, but such as I have, I'm gonna give to you. And you know, that, that, that takes me back, because I remember times when I wanted certain things. Yeah, I, I was yeah. looking for certain things, and, and I didn't get the things that I got, but I got something else. Uh, I remember one time I wanted a leather coat, you know, and you know back in the day leather coats was hard for a brother to come by. That's right. That's we didn't right. have money to buy leather coats. Uh, I did get a coat. It was it was leather, uh, but I got a I, I, mean, I got a, a turtleneck to go under. I got some stuff, but it wasn't what I wanted. But it was what I needed, mm -hmm. and that's what we're gonna see with this man here. When when he looked at Peter, when when Peter and John told him to to, to, to look at us, he looked at them with the anticipation yes. of yes. getting one thing. Yes. But he got something totally different. Here's something. You know, I found this story to be convicting mm. from the standpoint of you had people back then who was street beggars mm -hmm. or what we might today call homeless and we have them today right. we have people that take up regular corners mm -hmm. uh, i mean you get to know them or you get to know them mm -hmm. yeah. and, 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 and peter said silver and gold i don't have mm -hmm. and, and i'm not sure he not only meant i don't have at, maybe as much as he meant, that's not what you need. Mm -hmm. I'm going mm -hmm. to offer you something. And, and I say that because sometimes we have to be careful as a Christian society, as a Christian community, way the people off that we perceive as the throwaway mm -hmm. of society. Mm -hmm. Maybe people don't need money to just simply go do something, but I, I, I think we we need to caution ourselves that maybe the Lord has caused me to meet this homeless person for a reason. For me. Uh, there may be something I need to share with this person. Other than what he's asking for. Other than what he's asking for. Yeah. Not, not to dismiss their humanity right. because they're homeless or because they're broke or because they have some kind of addiction or because they have some type of mental issue. We have to remind ourselves that's God's child and Lord is there a way that I can let them do, that I can help them? Is there is there something I as Peter now, is there something I can do? I mean that, that's a whole different kind of lesson. You know that that's a that's a powerful conviction too, Ralph. And, and and imagine now had Peter and John did what, what we do. And you <clears throat> can just say, Well, I don't have any and keep going. That would have ended that chapter. There's a That's lot right. that God is That's gonna right. do with that crippled man. That's right. And that, that would not have happened had they not had they not stopped and given him they did not let, let's say they did not have silver and gold. Right. But they had something that he needed and they stopped to take the opportunity to give him that. That is a convicting I, 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 I have a service station close to my house that, that I almost avoid because I get hit up every mm -hmm. time I go there. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I'm, 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 I'm so rushed or so whatever that I have to go there. And I went there one day to get gas. And when I went, I didn't see anybody outside the station. So I got out, pumped my gas, and then I saw some move out of the corner of my eye. And I'm making a confession here, out of the corner of my eye. And I looked up and said, somebody coming toward me, and they're coming toward me. Now, I grew up in the hood, so I, I have a lot of radars that go on when people come close to me. But he appeared to be homeless. And so he, he said, hey, how you doing? And I said, I'm doing fine. And I said, no, I don't have any. I don't know. And he, he, he tickled me because he said, 
So you think I was getting ready to ask you for some money? <laughs> Jesus might have sent me to save your soul. <laughs> now that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> now I do believe still that he's he that money. No, no, he but he, he, he tickled me when he said that. <laughs> that's a good comeback. That's a new one. I've never heard that one before. I've never heard that one before. But, but, it, but it reminds me how quick we are to, to dismiss people. Dismiss yeah, people. dismiss them. Right. But I, I think, though, another point in here, it tells us about how men, ministries ought to be structured. I think you said earlier, Raph, sometimes just giving folk what they want is not true ministry. Right. Right. True ministry is right. giving folk what, what they, they need. need. That's right. Right. And Jesus did the same thing. That's a right. lot of people, you want this and want that. Because sometimes what a person needs, they may want money, uh, right. even in the neighborhood. I want you to give them food, but it may be better than what they need is training to get a job and get their own food, That's you know, right. or, drink, or, or or housing, you know, instead of giving people money to pay their rent, what they need is how to budget their money <laughs> and manage their money so that they can pay. And just simply giving them money for rent or house when they're mismanaging, but that ain't what they need. What they need may be awesome other tools. That's right. That's right. So that that that's just an interesting conviction. There. So, mm -hmm. But we, we pick back we pick back up the story and the apostles. Uh, uh, perform this miracle. One of the things I want to mention, really, as you look at chapters one, two, and three, while the church is growing, it is the apostles who are primarily performing yeah. the miracles. Correct. And, and Correct. so the miracles have a particular purpose mm -hmm. by God to confirm this new church. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just a religious thing. Right. It was right. a particular purpose. And even in Jerusalem, with now over uh, 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 five thousand. Christians, uh, not everybody's running around performing miracles. Right. It, 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 you see it with the apostles, and they perform this miracle, and this miracle attracts a lot of attention because this man is a man that people knew. Everybody knew. Everybody's familiar with him. This yeah. fellow had probably donated to him, mm -hmm. and so he 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 would be a big miracle because mm -hmm. nobody could fake that this man mm -hmm. could walk before they met him. Right. People knew this man couldn't walk. Right. And the Bible even goes to say he, he, he was over 40 years old. So he, yeah. he'd been in that position a long time. And so when people saw him leaping and praising God, even the Sadducees who wanted to do something about it said, we can't deny what can't 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 this. Can't deny it. As, as, as MC Hamlet would say, they said, we can't touch that. <laughs> we're going to let this go. And, and so they performed that miracle. You see that in verse number 11, there mm -hmm. they are again on that porch. Uh, yep. they're, they're on the porch so, called Solomon, which mm -hmm. is where the new church uh, was. Was uh, that was their little meeting spot within in the temple? But you know that 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 healing though that was that was Peter's opportunity, or let me say that was God's opportunity to allow Peter to preach the gospel. And, and as we look at chapter three and chapter four, we're going to see some 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 sermons, so to speak. Uh, that, 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 that should tell us, those of us who preach and who teach, what we should be trying to tell people when we're trying to convert them to, 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 to Christ. Uh, and not some of the things that we do tell them from time to time. Because what, what Peter did was said, look, y'all looking at us like we did something. Right, right, that's right. This is not about uh, us. That's right. None of this is about us. Uh, mm -hmm. You seen this man who hadn't walked ever in his life, and and because I held his hand and raised him up, I could strut my stuff. But this is not about me. That's right. And he That's took him all the way back to Abraham, to where to where this story with mankind really took off. With point him. well made, because we we have to make sure in our ministry and our preaching, and in, in our acts of charity and love. That it ain't about us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is about turning people's attention to the love of God, and we have to tell them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not. I, I, I'm not able to do this just because I'm able. God has blessed me, and I want to bless you. Yeah. We have to keep bringing. And He calls them in verse number 19. He calls them. He says, "Repent." So He took that opportunity mm -hmm. to actually present Christ. And one of the things we also have to guard against is. Uh, uh, Doing acts as, a, especially as a church, doing acts for the sake of the act. Right. Yes. It's to Come turn back. people to God. It's to we, turn we, to God. We, we don't distribute food for the sake of distributing mm -hmm. food. Food yeah. can be distributed by a lot of 
organization. Mm -hmm. When the church is involved in that, it's to demonstrate God's blessing on our life and wanting to be a blessing to other people's life for the opportunity that presents itself to share Christ or to get to know Him. So we can share Christ. That's right. That's right. I, I went back up just for a moment, though, <clears throat> because this man who got healed knew it was about God, uh, too, in his response. And then, of course, Peter's going to preach the sermon because the Bible said that, you know, you have the helpless. He was considered helpless. Then you had the helpers. They helped him. But I like the fact that they changed his focus. They, he, they say in verse, back up just a little bit, verse 4, they said, look at us. Look at and us. I think sometimes uh, to change our situation, it needs to change what we're looking at. That's right. You know, so he changed this man's focus. But when the man, when the man got healed, the man jumped up and he praised God in verse 8. He did not praise Peter and John. Mm -hmm. He praised mm -hmm. good God. Good boy. And then, you know, and literally, literally, this, literally, this, this miracle turned the city upside down mm -hmm. and got to the sermon that Peter, you know, would, would preach. And what's interesting, when, when Peter started out the sermon, he, he started out, he went back, because we, we know that these are Jews mm -hmm. that he's talking to. He went back and grabbed them where they were at the beginning, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. No Jew would that there was not a Jew that would not understand that beginning. That's, That's right. exactly That's right. When That's he exactly mentioned right. Abraham, yeah. Isaac, and Jacob, that takes them back to where they sit. connect them to that to unfolding the, story. Exactly. And he exactly. contrasted and convicted them. I like it. You know, it's interesting what, what Peter did is interesting. Going back to where you said it's in verse 13, mm -hmm. the God of Abraham, Isaac, and mm -hmm. Jacob. It's interesting. He then he said. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob glorified him, but you handed him over. He goes through yeah, a series of contracts. God glorified Jesus, but look at what you did. You, you handed, handed him over. Then look what he said. He said, Pilate, evil Pilate, wanted to release him, but you, but you executed him. <laughs> look, and he, he gave a series of about three or four contracts. And then he came down and contrasted Barabbas with Jesus. He said, Barabbas was the source of death. Mm -hmm. He said, but Jesus, in verse 9, verse 15, rather, he's the author of life. So he went through a series of contrasts, and I think also every message must convict people. That's right. It's That's got right. to convict That's people. Right. Yeah. It we, can't be so right. soft that doesn't. We have gotten to a point where we feel like, well, you all got to keep pointing out things. No, but we have to draw the contrast. Mm -hmm. We have to draw yeah. the contrast between light and darkness. Yeah. We have to draw. So converting people sometimes calls them... To, calls for us to convict them mm -hmm. of their sin. Yeah, it, it's yeah. not just about, well, no, you don't. No, it's the, the good news is there's a solution. Yeah, there's a solution. Yeah. But you need to know that you need the Lord. Peter, Peter not, he, he's not mincing words. No, he's not letting them know, no, no. let know they're in trouble and they need to repent mm -hmm. and they need to be converted. Yeah. And so you, you made a good point. He let them know where they were and what they needed to do That's right. to get it right. That's right. And you mentioned how, how, how strong he did it, how strong he spoke, but, but he did it with love. That's right. You know, sometimes we can, sometimes I can tell you you wrong because I don't like you that much anyway, and I'm just trying to make you feel bad. Yeah. Well, that's not going to change you. But if I'm telling you you're wrong for the right reasons, then I'm telling you how to get it right. As you mentioned down in verse 19, he said, look, you want to get this stuff right. Repent, therefore, and be converted. So you have to repent. You have to be converted that your sins may be blotted out. I, and I, I, you know, I do think one of the things we struggle with is that word repent. Because mm. I think too many times we think it means stop doing stop everything. Doing mm -hmm. And so people come into the church and they feel like, well, I must. Uh, I remember having this feeling myself. I must have forgot to repent. <laughs> Repentance ain't about stopping. It's about a turn in one's disposition. It's about, yeah. it's about shifting your beliefs. Yeah. It's about changing how you think. It's kind of like. What you talk about, Tim? It's about changing your focus. Oh, yes. And you know, oh, okay. and, and you know, we talked earlier about religious tradition people bring to the church, but they also bring their, their weaknesses and their sinful mm -hmm. habits into the church. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and the, the church ought to be a place where we can receive that because it's an unfolding story, and their life is an unfolding story. They don't need to come here with it all together. They need to come here with a shift in their focus and yeah. a shift in their belief that God has already changed me inwardly mm -hmm. and it's going to show up sooner or later. Out. Out. Yeah, and it's a process. Yeah, it's a right. 
I like what Peter did though in verse 17. Yeah. He said, now yeah, fellow yeah, Israelites, yeah, good he said, I know you acted in this game. Yeah, he right. said, I know. This, this, that's right. This is yeah. what he saw. <laughs> <saw He's> <laughs> and then he says, I, I know you. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> you know, I think about what Paul said. Paul says, speaking the truth in love. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. You know, I already said, see, see if I can say this right. Somebody said, say what you mean, mean what you say. But don't be mean when you say it. Yeah, you got it. I like that. I mean, this, this is him. I mean, he's he, he's really punched him. And yeah. this is him now softening up, saying softening up. You did it to me. Yeah. yeah, you did. And he, and he, and he <laughs> went there right before he told him, this is how to get it. This is how you fix it. This is right. how you fix it. This is exactly right. Good part. But, but uh, 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 unless you all got something else, there, I want to drop down to chapter four because mm -hmm. I want to show you who did not receive this miracle <laughs> well. And what happened? No, no, they didn't receive it well. Uh, chapter four says, and as they spake unto the people, the priest, and the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved. Now remember, they're in this temple. In the temple. And the Sadducees and the priests and all of them were in the temple, but they hear about what's going on on Solomon's holy porch. And the Bible says they were they they they, they, they were grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And one thing you know we have to keep in mind: if if if, if what they are preaching is true, mm -hmm. it's going to destroy their whole the, the Sadducees and the their whole structure and their whole yeah. system of religion and their whole profitability. Yeah. So they got a lot that they're invested in that they're trying to protect. I mean, mm -hmm. that's exactly right. <laughs> and so these guys are highly upset. Yeah, because you know, the that. Sadducees, they don't believe in the resurrection. They don't believe in right. the right. immortality. That's right. That's right. So they had a stake in, in that too. That's right. and, and the same hatred they was largely made up of Sadducees. They, they were the majority right. and they held the the uh, high priest position. So that's something yeah. they just couldn't let stay. They could money. Y'all are just preaching this resurrection. Yeah. yeah. We've told y'all ain't gonna put it out. Yeah. You know, go ahead. No, I, I was just gonna say, and a key to it for, for me is that, you know, they knew that, well, the Sadducees, they, made, they, they, they didn't believe in the resurrection, but they knew that it did happen. And, and it's almost kind of akin to, to what we see today sometimes you have to have to deny the truth in order to do what you want to do right and, and we, we 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 just we see that going on in our world uh, and and it helps me to know that we're still just unfolding because we have to get to the point to where the truth is the truth you don't have to always um understand the truth but as long when you recognize it as the truth then you need to change yes to the truth we're still in the early days of the church, and you notice in verse number four that the church is now grown. The Bible says, yeah. How be it many of them which heard the word believed? And the number of the men was about 5,000. Mm -hmm. uh, it's believed that if you included the women and children, that it would be somewhere between 10 and 15,000. This, yeah. this, 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 just imagine. Yeah. This church has flourished, and now it's up to 15,000, approximately 15,000. Men and women have come to believe. So, I, I, and the reason I want to set that up, you got to see why the Sanhedrin's are becoming disturbed. Yeah, that's right. You know, if this thing would just go away, they wouldn't worry about it. But when you start taking 15,000 yeah. of their members, the faithful Jews who now begin to diminish in their Jewish practice and are beginning to ascend in the practice of this new thing, and they're taking their money that they were giving to the temple. Oh, yes. And they're giving it now to this new, new thing. Community. This new thing. And, <laughs> and I like, you know, the Bible keeps emphasizing this men. That's right. Yeah, men. Yeah. And, and I think for men, that tells us that in many ways, we, we keep, if you get men in this, even this whole society, get men, I think Satan has launched an intense attack on Men. Men. Chapter 4 looks like the beginning of Satan's desire to destroy the church. And because success always invites opposition. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he's, but you know what? He can't stop it. Raptors read it. They continue to grow. Continue to grow. That tells us the devil can't stop what God is doing. That's exactly right. Especially if we follow the pattern that the Lord laid out. Jesus said he couldn't stop it. He can't stop it. No weapon formed against you. 
So here they are now, the Sanhedrin, the, the, the high priest and his, his kinfolk, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. They're upset about this and they decide they're going to confront uh, Peter and, 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 and about this, Peter and James, about this miracle they performed. So mm -hmm. they call them in and they ask them about what power, verse number seven, about what power or about what name have you done this? Because they consider themselves the highest ranking power in town. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't deny it was done. That's right. The Sanhedrin's. <laughs> were both a spiritual body and a political body. Mm -hmm. So they're really saying, by what authority? The hell you doing? I mean, we didn't, didn't come from us. You didn't get a, didn't you didn't come get a permit come through us. <laughs> That's right. You didn't get a permit here. Yeah. So by yeah. what authority are you doing this? And they're not going to like Peter's no answer. No. Uh, Peter lets them know, man, I, I got to throw it much higher than you. <laughs> That's right. I got to throw it and do yeah. what I'm yeah. doing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. He, thought, he thought out, let me read verse 9. He started out in verse 9 by saying, if you, if, if we this day are examined or questioned of the good deed that we've done to the impotent or to the helpless man, by what means he is made whole, then be it known to you and all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and then he goes he back. Preaching to them back. Who you crucified. <laughs> he always turns it back to them. Always. Them. He said, I ain't letting y'all lose. Yeah. I'm not going to turn y'all loose. Yeah. Yeah. But he, here's the what gets me says, whom God raised from, from the dead. See, now I'm saying, he just can't let the arm. They can't nah, Don't that. say that. Yeah. Don't say it. Yeah. But Peter intentionally mm -hmm. says to them, God resurrection. resurrection. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. What he yeah. says, yeah. Even, mm -hmm. even by him. Does this man stand here whole before you today? Yeah, and I, you know, things that you, when you read that, and I'll get to the cornerstone, I think we really have to be careful too, and it's the problem with religious structure and organization, feeling that people somehow got to go through, I'm going to say us mm -hmm. or whoever you that's are. Right. That's right. God don't have to go through right. us that's to right. do nothing. That's exactly right. right. There are people, exactly right. and God's circle of believers is much greater than what most people believe this is even and much greater and exactly. people don't have in fact to me when you tell people that especially when you deal with other believers that's cultish talk that's how cults talk you got to get our permission before you bless people before you and look and they were healing this man yep. and then they say what authority i like what jesus said he said Jesus is the stone you builders reject. Mm -hmm. Boy, he didn't turn them loose. <laughs> he said, which has become the cornerstone, which is really critical because That's the cool. cornerstone is That's always it. the first stone. Anytime, you, even today, if you want to build something, the stone, the cornerstone cool. is the first one set. Mm -hmm. And everything that is built, every other stone is built, built, built in reference to that stone. That's right. Yeah. 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 You need to have that. You don't get no power for them. Now you can imagine that the Sanhedrins are accustomed. Now this is a body of about 70 men. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's like a huge Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. You can imagine that most people called before them are pretty intimidating. Yeah. And they're used to that. Yeah. They, yeah. they carry that aura about them. Mm -hmm. they, it was this august body. Yeah. And yet these two men, uneducated, un 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 untrained, mm -hmm. unlearned, from, from the, the, the Bible says, yeah. verse, verse number 13 says, now when they saw the, bold, the boldness, I mean, you, you, you guys not coming before us like other people. Yeah. That's right. I mean, we're used to people coming in trembling. And you two uneducated, unlearned <laughs> fishermen coming here with boldness. Mm -hmm. I mean, that amazed, that threw them off. It was like <laughs> something different about these guys. But they knew why. They knew why they were bold. They knew why they came because they had been with Jesus. They took knowledge. That's right. They had been, been with Jesus. Jesus. And Jesus had that same boldness. He wasn't intimidated. And I, and I got to tell you something. When you and Jesus, you don't have to let life intimidate you. You don't have to intimidate you. We're going to go through this trial next week. Yes. We're going to pick up this trial that, that uh, the uh, two apostles are facing boldly. Because when you are standing in the power of the Almighty God, mm -hmm. you don't have to be fearful. That's right. You don't have to be afraid because God is with you. But we'll pick it up next week. Until then, may God bless you and may he keep you is my prayer, our Amen. prayer. Amen.